Hi, welcome to my channel Mostly Knitting. I'm Tash and it is Thursday the 8th of June 2023. If you're new here, this is a podcast where I talk mostly about my knitting that I've been doing during the week and if I've done any other crafting. And if you're a returning viewer, thanks for coming back. So I've got a really full, um, full episode this week, so I might just jump into it. So I have two finished objects. That's my first, um, first section. And the, I'm wearing one of my finished objects. Finally, um, I finished my second ranunculus. So this is by ranunculus by Midori Hiroshi. Um, I use Julie Aslan Anatolia in this gorgeous, orange, really vivid orange color called Clementine. The, I'll stand back and show you, and then I'll talk a little bit more about it. So it's, it only, it weighs 89 grams. So it's super light and airy. I did hold the yarn double. Um, so I used, it was 425 grams and I have, um, I actually have 14 grams left. So it must have just, no, 16 grams left. So I must have had just 105 grams from the four balls. And um, yeah, so I made it with long, longish sleeves. Um, they sort of grew a tiny bit, but it's actually just where I would want them to finish sort of um, bracelet length, I think they're called. And yeah, it's really, really lovely. I'll show you, I did do the, um, uh, what do you call it, the short rows in the back where you drop the neckline a little bit. I didn't do them in the front for this one and I think I would do, well I will do it again next time because it just drops these elongated stitches down from the, so it's not like to, like you need extra fabric here but it just drops the elongated stitches down and makes it look a little bit more like a necklace which I think was the idea of the pattern is that you have these sort of increasing decorative um, things down the yoke and maybe you can see it a little better and I'll, I'll put a picture of the I'll put a picture of the finished object um, so you can see it a little better um, yeah so I'm really happy with how it came out it's just so lovely and light um, I did want to record things along the way so that was sort of one of the reasons I just sort of when I knew I wanted to record something but I didn't have time to record it I just went okay I have to leave that for now so any other things um so i did uh, a video i just did a video on the i cord bind off and uploaded that and then i've got another one to upload of where you seem let me see if i can show you where it is i have to figure out where it is is that it yeah i can see it a bit easier there where you actually where is it it's good if you can't see it i guess that's ah, oh, there it is um, just there where I did sort of mattress stitch to join those two so I'll up that, uh, load that video um, in a couple of days I'll get this one up first and yeah so I'm really oh, it's just so lovely and light and warm and um, yeah it's just really really nice and I love the color so I might just I grabbed my green one as well because I thought well you can sort of maybe I can show you see you can see better with that one see how the front I actually did do the front short rows with this one and there's more back short rows you can see that um, it's, I think there's 10 back short rows and six front short rows and I like it um, I do like it I might sorry dog was just barking at someone going for a walk how dare they uh, right so I don't think there's anything else that I wanted to say about it except that I love it um, and yes, I'll definitely be making more. The, uh, the other finished object that I made from this week, actually they've already been worn by my daughter, is the sport weight socks with a gusset heel using skein, um, skein yarn, a skein sport yarn in the colorway Eventide. And I used a 2.75 millimeter needle and yeah, she already, I finished them, gave them to her yesterday and she's already worn them. So yeah, although obviously not too much. So I think I'm happy with how they came out and um, and she likes them and she said they fit, so that's good. And I thought I'll just show the beanie um, that I wasn't able to show the other day because she'd already taken it. So that's the black beanie that I had knit for her. You know, very plain. Um, let's try it on. I don't know where the end is. Just um, a fairly basic black. You can't even see my head. It's like I blend into the background. Um, yeah, so. I think that fits her right. That's what she likes, a tight beanie, like she doesn't like any slouch or anything. So yeah, and that one's, um, so that was, I already mentioned it last week, but it's with the, I think the Mayak yarn and um, the Rowan, uh, Rowan Kid Silk Haze in the colorway Wicked. So 
um, yeah, so they're my finished objects. Now my new whips. Uh, actually, funnily enough, I cast on another ranunculus pretty much straight away, which is, um, I'd been meaning to do, so it was in my plans, so I was a good girl and I went off the plans list. Oops, sorry. Um, and it is um, in Barocco Remix in this purple colour. So this one I used with a yarn held, so it's a lace weight mohair silk with a yarn held double on a six mil needle. So it's super, super light and airy and open. And this one is, um, what, uh, I have to find the tag. I did find the tag. It is a nylon, cotton, acrylic, silk and linen blend. And normally you would use a five mil needle. This, that's what the, the tag says, five mil needle, but it is a little bit more open um, with the ranunculus. So, so I am using the six mil needle. And so this is um, held single. And I did do the tubular cast on the narrow one, but it is actually a pretty, a pretty wide, but not crazy wide neckline. And then I did the, I did the short rows in the front and the back. So that's the back there with 10 short rows and that's the front with six, six short rows. Um, and then I'll, I'll pretty much follow the pattern. I'll do short sleeves. I really like this Lady Yvonne's version. I'll put a picture up there. She didn't do the, um, the short rows in the front, but um, she did do them in the back and you can see them really nicely there. And I will, um, uh, Anyway, I did already did them and I did a video on that as well because with this one I forgot to do a, a video, a tutorial of the short rows. I already have a tutorial for short rows, but I thought, um, which I'll put a link to up there, but I did one specifically for ranunculus um, just in case that was, you know, just easier for, for people to see. So, but I've done it on this yarn because obviously I can't do it with this one anymore. Uh, yeah, so I've been meaning to cast that on and um, I'll just I'll quickly try it on. Um, try not to be, these needles are a bit noisy. Um, yep. Yeah. So the cable's not quite long enough to stretch it out as far as it would stretch, but I think it will stretch reasonably well and I'm about to do that elongated stitches there. So yeah, that's coming along nicely. I think I only just started that either yesterday or the, maybe two days ago. Um, and I just put these little point protectors on them to stop everything from falling off the needles. Uh, and I, I did just, I had it on a smaller needle and I just knitted off to that so I could try it on so you could see it. Um, yeah, so that's um, my third ranunculus, but this one will be short sleeves because I only have two and a bit balls of this yarn. So that's that one. My um, next new cast on is um, the sorrel, a new sorrel. And I'll just grab that. So I'm very excited about this one. It is so pretty. I'll show you off the needles and then I'll try it on. So I, I have knitted onto a, um, onto a large circular needle. And oh, it's just so gorgeous. It's a pattern that works really, really well if you've got sort of um, held so you hold um, a mohair or a silk mohair or something with some halo so that's Rowan Kid Silk Haze and the colorway Nectar and then if you've got a yarn that has some kind of flex or speckles in it that just shows up really nicely um, through the um, you know through the yarn but sort of muted by the, the um, mohair halo yeah so it's really lovely um, what have I done differently? So my, I've only done um, three quarters of an inch of ribbing instead of one and a half inches because I didn't, I didn't like how high up the neckline came on it. And I just thought it would bother me there. Even though I like things around my neck, I, I find I don't want to feel choked. So, um, so with my other ones, they sort of, I, I did pretty much the same as I did my other ones. I cast on for the 35 inch size. I. Um, which has a slightly larger cast on number than the 31 inch. I did use larger needles too. I used instead of the pattern is 3.25 and 3.75 and just like my other ones I did the same with this one using a 3.5 for the ribbing and a 4 mil for the body and yes I'm really liking it so I'll just try it on. It's, I should be able to pull it pretty well because I've got it on a fairly long cable um, and that's where it should sort of end up coming down to if it's like my other two. 
um, yeah, so I've, I've still got a little bit to go in the yolk, but not heaps. One thing I did was I actually cut out six rows, so just one of these um, sort of uh, dropped elongated, or no, elongated, no, what are they called? It was elongated stitches in ranunculus, whatever this little stitch pattern is called. Um, that's a six row repeat, so I just cut out one of them because my other ones, I found the yoke was a little bit long. And so I thought that's just an easy way to shorten it by cutting out one of those. And let me see, um, I'm almost at the point. So this this yarn is um, from my So Faded, left, uh, some leftovers from So Faded, and that's Life in the Long Grass Linen Merino. And I have, I'm almost, I think I've got to do four more rows, and then I'm at the point where I'm going to start alternating. And so my other colors are sort of, I think, a mixture of these ones will be my second colour because I don't have enough of one for a second colour but I think those are pretty similar in, in value um, underneath the mohair that should be okay. I just like this one because it's so got these really pretty hot pink. I made um, a, a shawl for Beck out of this one, the Pebble Beach shawl. Um, I just love that one. I don't know what that one is. I think that might be um, leftovers from my aunt. That one's from my um, Dotted Rays, and this one is from a top that I made that I don't think I've shown in a faux from the vault. So high, it's high low, Tosh Merino Light, no, Tosh Mo Light in the colorway high low. So that will be my second color, sort of cobbled together for my second color. And then these are my other ones coming up later. So Super Speckles, that's for the bottom. Yeah, so I'm just, mm, I think I've only, uh, I don't know, maybe I cast that on maybe five or six days ago and anyway, I'm really loving it just oh, it's so gorgeous so I might just quickly try on the other one my blue one so you can see what I'm talking about in the yoke um, and it did work out okay I need to put labels in which is the back there we go that's the back I've, I can usually find where the tail is but which is the back so sorry about oh. So it's not heaps of ease, but there's a bit of ease. The sleeves are actually a bit tight. Um, I often go up a size for Magic Loop for the sleeve and I forgot. So I probably, and I think I like, I did my usual trick of picking up two extra stitches in the underarm and then decreasing them away. But I wish I hadn't decreased them away because it's a little bit snug. So I think for the other one, I'll make sure I do that. But can you see how the, like that's my arm, my armpits up here. There's a lot of, um, there's just, that's a bit too long. So losing one of these should just bring that up a little bit. And I'll make sure that I've got a few more stitches on the needles, because I think I only had something like 52 stitches on the needles, which is just a little bit too tight here. And I didn't do any decreases down the arm, so it's nice and loose here, but just feels a little bit snug here, so. But can you see also the neckline? That That's totally fine for me. That's where I want it to sit. I didn't want it to sit up um, like that. Yeah, it's personal preference. Like it's, it looks nice like that too. It's just not what I wanted. So just doing that, um, larger needle size and shorter, like not as long, did the trick. So that's, um, that's my new cast on of the Sorrel. Uh, let's see, what else have I got? Oh, and my other new cast on, because I finished those socks for Mia. Oh, yeah. Because I finished those socks for Mia, um, I was ready to cast on the skimmer socks. Sorry, I get a bit excited about new new projects. So I know I haven't done very much, but look, the sorrel, that was a lot on the sorrel. So that's all I've done so far in the skimmer socks and they shouldn't take too long. Um, they're on a 2.25 millimeter needle, which is my usual um, needle size for a, sport, uh, for a fingering weight sock. This yarn is actually so cool. This is the leftovers from the top part of this sorrel. So this is circus tonic uh, handmade, I think something like firework sparkle sock. So actually, I don't know if you can see that, there's actually some sparkle in there. Probably can't. Anyway, sparkle in that. Can you see that? Oh yeah, a little bit. A bit of silver sparkle. Yeah, so I've got 42 grams of that left, and I think that should be enough for these socks. So um, you only knit like two and a half inches, and then you put 
like the, the top part of the foot on waist yarn and then or spare needle and then you knit down the bottom um, because they're no-show socks so shouldn't be a lot of knitting and hopefully 42 grams will be will be enough so they're my new projects uh, let's see other ones that I'm still working on uh, let me see. I'll grab the Felix pullover I don't have quite enough room near the computer to have all of this. So the Felix pullover, I'm using um, Sundara Aran Silky Merino in somewhere out there and held with Knit Picks Aloft in the Colourway Labyrinth. That's also on a six mil needle, so I've got two things on quite large needles. Um, I did the tubular cast on and did I do any, were there short rows? I don't know if there were short rows, I can't remember. Anyway. I did whatever the pattern said. I don't think I went rogue. Um, and I just put that there so I know which is the front because there's not a lot of difference. Um, there must have been short rows. Sorry, bits in my, in my mouth. Um, yes, so it's got this um, pretty uh, eyelet detail down the side and I've um, split off for the I was a bit worried that there wasn't enough room there, but like as in I, I split off a bit early, but I think it's going to be okay. And um, Mia loves this color, this sort of forest green color. And I showed her this and she tried it on and she likes it. And there's just not a lot of, there's not a lot of projects or things that I make for the kids that they want to wear. Although Mia, Mia is starting to now. She works three days a week at the same school I teach at in the IT department. And so she's having to wear sort of more, you know, less sort of jeans and trackies and those kinds of clothes. She's wearing more sort of businessy sort of clothes. Um, so she's sort of dressing up a little bit more. So yeah, so this might be a nice um, jumper that she could wear over a skirt or something in winter and because it's six mil. And now she's got a much bigger bust than I do, but she's got the tiniest little frame, like her, um, you know, her sort of her underbust is smaller than my underbust. She's just got a bit more actual bust. But this is, um, I think, loose enough for um, for her. And yeah, so I'll, and I'll make it full sleeves. I think I've got enough yarn. So uh, um, yeah. Anyway, that's coming along really nicely. I'm just trying to think what uh, anything else. Oh, I did block it mid project to see if it grew. It actually grew that way, not uh, lengthwise. So um, I think, and I just wanted to make sure I did that before I split off for the sleeves. So, yep. Oh, and um, the tubular bind off, what did I do? I did a, th like what the pattern said, a 3.75 for the start and then a five mil for the ribbing and then a six mil for the, for the body. All right, so that's the Felix pullover. Um, the next thing I wanted to show you is ex exploration station. I'm just not, um, sorry, I don't know where I'm connected. I'm just not loving, gosh, so many things with mohair and um, yeah, fluff everywhere. I'm not really loving the color combo that I've chosen. And it, I think I mentioned last week that I might like it better as I make more of it, but of course the more you make of it, the more you know invested you are and then it's more to, like it's just more time sunk into something that you don't necessarily may not love. Anyway, that's where I'm at at the moment. I did finish the antler and I did the last, um, you know, the whatever the, the ink in the separating. I also, when I did the video on this section here, this initial blue section, um, I reviewed it and I just didn't like it. It was hard to see, the yarn was um, just too thin and too dark. But I, if anyone actually wants to, me to do a video on, because Stephen West has a video on the start of it, but he holds the yarn in his left hand. And that can be, it can be hard for people to translate that if they hold the yarn English to go like, even when you make a stitch, it looks very different when you're knitting continental. So I'm happy to do, it didn't take me very long to do the video. Um, if anyone wants me to do one, I'm more than happy to do one. Just put a note in the comments um, and I'll do it with like, you know, much larger, thicker yarn, light colored, um, so that you can actually see it better. I mean, obviously I'm not gonna make an exploration station like in that yarn, but just for this cast on edge, so you can see it, the cast on in the first few rows. 
um, because the the cast on's a bit fiddly and I didn't understand the pattern I had to like watch his video because I was like what do you mean when you pick up the extra three stitches from anyway it was a bit confusing for me but I watched his video and that it made sense but it's can be hard if you don't knit with the yarn in the right hand anyway let me know if you'd like me to do one and I will but I'm not going to put the one up on this because it's just not really worth it it's too hard to too hard to see the yarn's so dark and where, like where am I actually going into the stitches um yep so the video's there but I don't think I'll put it up so oh that was the other thing the colors um I've just followed the pattern so far but with the colors what I'm going to do because so many people have made it I'm going to go and have a look on Ravelry one of the things that I find is that um like I really need to see it and Quite often I'll just sort of mimic someone else's colors if they've already done it and I like it I'll just go oh, okay it may not be exactly the same colors but something in the same family so yeah I'll have a bit of a look on Ravelry and sort of either commit to those colors or switch up something if I'm um, but it's just paused at the moment the other um, project that I'm doing right now is the muscle bra by Solder Teague on a 3.25 millimeter needle so that's um, Tosh Merino light in neon peach and I've made a fair bit of progress because this is my sort of vanilla knitting at the moment seeing I don't have a sock on the needles um, and I actually probably want well, there's still a bit to go there but I should be getting towards where I should measure that uh, the antler so that um, yes yeah, so I think that's gonna that's gonna be a really nice one and I already have the next one lined up I don't know where I put the yarn doesn't matter um, I've got a new one lined up uh, from the As You Wish yarn that I got. Anyway, that's in plans, but yeah, I've got another one coming after I've finished this one and I have more yarn um, of the, oh, that's Tosh Merino Light in the colorway Antler. Right, so, and then the last one is the Cumulus T, which I have, I am going to do the um, eye cord for the neckline. I haven't done anything on it, just showing it if you haven't seen, like if you haven't seen any of my old videos, um, I showed this last week and the week before. <laughs> Um, where the neckline is just too big, the hot, the size is too big, the, my gauge really changed from when I did a little square this big to this size, my gauge went from 28 to 24 stitches over 4 inches, so it's way bigger, but I will try with the eye cord to, just to see, uh, and I'm not going to mush it in and make it look all puckery, I'll just do it naturally to where it sort of seems like it looks good. And then if it works for me, great. If not, Beck likes it, she could try it. Or Mia might like it, although this isn't really Mia's colors. But um, anyway, we'll see. So that's um, that's the Cumulus T by Petite Knits and I'm knitting it in uh, the recommended yarn, knitting for Olive Pure Silk on a three millimeter needle. So the, the recommended yarn, the recommended needle size, but it's just minus. And I normally, my gauge is normally pretty pretty close to whatever they recommended but not for this one or it was for my swatch but not for the for the big version right so that's um is that it for my yes that's it for my um my whips we are up to faux from the vault right so i just got into my faux from the vault this is the versailles shell by connie chang chin chio and I used um, Louette, I think it's pronounced Louette, even though I would have said Louet, but I've heard people say Louette, Euroflax wet spun linen in seafoam green, and I used just under two skeins of that. Now this faux is 11 years old, it will be 11 years old in October, so she's been around a while. Um, it's pretty long, I used to make all my, my teas quite long, um, I'm making them a bit shorter now, so that kind of dates it a little bit, I guess. It has this pretty detail. The pattern itself was meant to have a split hem but I don't really like split hems so um, I just did it uh, without the split hem in the round and it has this little one on the back and one on the front detail. I did the body in the round. Um, the lace work actually here and here. There's lace on both sides so both on the right side and the wrong side so it was a fair bit of, I mean it's not a lot of it but it took you know paying attention to do the lace work. It's got these three little button holes and I think I just do a crochet um, crochet thing there and you also do um, pick up around the armholes and do a crochet thing to sort of pull that in so you don't have like it just finishes it nicely. Um, I think there was meant to be some crochet around the top but I didn't bother with that. Um, you do pick up and knit and then bind off but yeah 
I just didn't do I didn't do the any extra crocheting crocheting there and um yeah I really like it I used to wear it a lot with white these white pants that I had and then the white pants got a stain on them and then I think I got rid of them I don't know why I didn't just dye them I loved these pants so I guess I wasn't I don't know I wasn't dying or doing anyway I just at the time I think I didn't know what to do and so I let them go but I probably could have done something with them anyway because I really loved them but now I sort of don't know what to wear with this because I don't have well I do have some white pants anyway sometimes you, know, you just sort of forget that you have things and um I have all my knit tops in one drawer and I just don't wear a lot of my knit tops which is something I'm really thinking about in the the knit like the summary sort of tops that I'm knitting is that I don't wear the ones I've made that often so I do need to think a little bit about either pulling them out and having them more accessible and visual so I see them and think about them um, yeah but I really like this and it's held up really well like obviously I don't I mean I know you can throw linen in the dry washing machine and dryer but I don't because I just um, it's not like it can't go in there but I just you know it's got buttons in it and I just think nah I just wash it by hand yeah so I really I do like it I think it's pretty now I have more of this yarn I have a cream um, I had three skeins so I've got plenty of three in the um, white in a white colorway and three in a pewter colorway so I'm trying to figure out what to make the white one I had in mind this tuxedo top that I was going to make and this um, Lady on Ravelry, City Pearl. She did a beautiful one with these black buttons. It was so gorgeous. Um, but like, I think my, you know how you sort of taste, this is like 11 years ago, right? So my tastes have changed a little bit. I'm not sure that I would wear that. So now I have to think, what would I do with it now? So yeah, so I have to have a think about that. So it's 100% linen. It's like a sport weight linen. Uh, let me think what else. Yeah, I think that's that's it. So that's my faux from the vault. And yeah, just a, a nice summer top. It didn't, I think it took me two weeks to make. I think I was quiet, like I was really enjoying it. I thought the linen would be a lot harder on my hands, but it was, it was and really splitty, but it was actually totally fine. I was a bit slower. I definitely was slower knitting it. Um, I remember that, even though it was a long time ago. Uh, I do remember just taking a little bit longer to get into a rhythm with it. But other than that, um, it, was, it was okay. Right. Uh, and also I probably mixed it up with other knits as well so it wasn't too much on just you know because linen doesn't have the stretchiness so it is, a bit, it is a bit harder on your hands to knit with. One thing I was going to say actually just like the lady who you know liked her version City Pearl she hasn't been on Ravelry in like 10 years and I always feel a bit sad like and I don't think she's on Instagram or at least I couldn't find her and I you know when you see someone's projects and you love them and you think they're so beautiful and then they just stop posting and you know I mean they're not it's not their responsibility to um, entertain or inspire me but I do like when you have been inspired by someone then you get a bit like oh they're not they're not there anymore and I wonder if they're still making and yeah and the other person who I haven't seen on either Ravelry or Instagram much is Jennifer Steingas who's knit Love Wool and I've knit a lot of her designs um, like a lot of beautiful yoked sweaters and I've turned them into dresses and things and you know and she's a designer and that's her main business so I often it just makes me sad I sort of wonder if something something difficult has happened in their lives to just for them to stop um, you know it's not their responsibility to tell anybody or anything but I just um, yeah I sort of wonder I think oh something bad must have happened or you feel sad um, anyway I hope that she comes back and keeps some um, well I hope she's obviously okay and I hope she comes back and um, keeps you know putting out patterns because she's really you know inspiring um, knitwear designer and I also think that's obviously a business for her and so you know you hope for women as well particularly well men too but if someone can actually make a business out of this in this industry you hope that it's you know that they have some success and they can actually make a living out of it um, right so my plans coming up I don't have anything immediate except the mitts for Mia and I'm going to make them with the same yarn I don't know where I put that beanie. The black beanie that I made for Mia, I'll use the same yarn for some mitts for her. Um, I think I've got enough on the needles. I've got the sorrel, I've got the um, Felix pullover, I've got the new ranunculus. I, I think I have no business making any new plans. So I know I still wanna make the purple sorrel. I still, I, I know, oh, I started those new socks as well. And so, and I've got a new muscle bra in the pipeline. So I think that's enough for now. I, and I need to figure out what I'm doing with cumulus. So um, that's, yeah, so we'll just 
zip it with new plans. The other thing I wanted to mention was the knit along. I forgot to mention it last week. So um, if you're able to, I'll put um, the hashtag down here again, mostly knitting YouTube cow. Um, so Janice has posted some photos of, um, like she's got four different objects, uh, four different um, knits that she's doing like an Ingalls and um, gosh, a bunch of different um, muscle bra, I think as well and really beautiful so she posted with the hashtag and Kerry did as well I think she's gonna make some mitts so yes please do if you're making something and it would qualify um, like I would like this to be uh, like I'd like to see what you're making as well like I was saying like I like to see other people's things and I um, and I, I um, I do look at uh, Karen Casuarina girls quite a lot so she's and, I, and I'm starting to follow people on Instagram too so that's what I can do is if you post something in there then I can follow you on Instagram I don't love the whole Instagram model I seem to get this is my own fault but I seem to get a lot of reels with dog and cat videos and I know that's my fault because I watch them and the and the algorithm has figured out that I watch them it's quite annoying because I think I can get sucked in which I know that's the whole point that's it's designed that way but I also find myself like 15 minutes later after you know and, and then I send them to the kids and the kids are like mom get off get off the reels or oh, you know mom's on Instagram again so anyway it can be a real time suck so but oh, anyway back to what I was talking about um, yes if you can post this is what I actually want to see I actually want to see on Instagram people's um, either friends and what they're doing where they're at or, up to and or people who are watching and showing their knitting and yeah so yes that would be really great if you could do that um, let me think what else so I don't have any sewing or any crochet I feel like there were some more things that I was going to talk about oh yes this is an interesting thing so um, I was chatting with Beck she is making this gorgeous sweater um, in our video I'll have another look at it and I'll put a name of it down here in the video that we did together she showed these plans that she had for this beautiful color work sweater and she's making it and I'll put a picture of where she's up to and she was said to me she was thinking of putting some short rows in and and so we were chatting about it and she said that because I was sort of thinking about short rows where you um, so there's two main kind of ways of doing short rows. Aside from the methods like German short row and wrap and turn, you can do them where you're increasing in, um, in stitches or you can do them where you're decreasing in stitches. So you can start with like um, really small short rows that, and you're working your way out or you can start working your way out and decreasing to a small, sorry if I've made anybody dizzy there. If you're working short, and then you're getting longer as you go, you resolve them as you're going because you get to them, knit past them, and then you get to that one and knit past it. And that's actually what happens in the ranunculus. You um, you start with short ones and then you, you know, knit past that, do another short row, knit past that one, go a bit further, do another short row. And, or you can do it the other way where you start off with a really long short row and um, you still obviously and then you're knitting less and less each time and then you do one big row where you come around and you resolve them all at once and so Beck found this post and I think it was by someone Talvi Knits which said that um, so I think what's her name um, Susanna Winter and she did a blog post and I'll put a picture of the post up here and or maybe I'll put a link in the show notes as well where she was saying that oh well if you're doing top down if you're doing top down, you'll do decreasing short rows. Um, and if it's bottom up, you'll do increasing short rows. And if you do it the other way around, you'll end up with this hump or, and and I, I struggle a little bit with that because, so she was saying top down, you should be doing decreasing short rows or you'll end up with a hump. But ranunculus has, is top down and you have decreasing short rows. So, um, decreasing increasing sorry top down and you have increasing ones she was saying no if you're doing top down you should have decreasing ones but in ranunculus it's top down and you've got increasing ones so I just like I question things now if people say something I think oh, that's interesting let me go and have so I've pulled out a bunch of knitting books and I'm looking at um, so Elizabeth Zimmerman mostly does bottom up and um, Barbara Walker top down and then I've looked at the principles of knitting by um, June Hemmons Hyatt and 
and I'm still not convinced. So, and I've done both ways in both directions and vice versa, and I haven't, I haven't struck this. So I'm not convinced that it actually matters, but I, I don't want to just stop there. I am actually going to experiment and I'm going to take a look at my projects that I've made with the different kinds of short rows um, from different directions and seeing if I've noticed that. So yeah, it's a, I, I like to figure those things out. I do know that there's a definite method in terms of, um, you know, when normally you do, like let's say you wanted short rows um, to drop the back, um, so your neckline came up a little bit higher in the back. Um, the rule of thumb is you sort of, you take your stitches and you divide it into thirds. So let's say you had 180 stitches, two thirds of that is 120. So you'd put a marker at the center and you'd go 60 and then 60 back and then another 60 this way. So you've got a third of your work in the center that you're not working on. And that would be the furthest you would go. And then in terms of how many stitches you leave in between, whether you go till five from the end or six from the end, or if you're going the other way, if you're going like six until, um, depends on how deep you want your short rows. So, you know, do you want them, um, do you want six rows, like in ranunculus, in the front, you've only got six rows of short rows in the back, and, and I think you only have, you go until five from the end, whereas, or oh, no, that's the other way around, it's five past. Sorry, I'm, I'm yeah. it is hard to verbalize this. With ranunculus, you go past the last short row and on the front you go five past the last short row because you don't have as many whereas on the back you go three past the last short row because you've got ten rows rather than six rows so if you don't go as far you're going to do it a little bit further and that's a good example with ranunculus you have 90 stitches and it's split up into thirds so it's 30 30 um, so 30 on the front and then same with the back. So you're going around um, the back and the front there. So yeah, anyway, it's something that I'm thinking about um, actually working out and sort of playing with a little bit to figure out. It doesn't matter, maybe doing some swatching. It's tricky with swatches though because you almost need the whole garment. So I might just, I've knit so many sweaters, I might take a look through at the ones that I've done short rows of and, and on and looked at the pattern and seen which kind they were and see if it makes any difference because I am curious. Um, yeah, so that, that is one thing um, that I was thinking about. Was there something else? Um, probably, oh, one other thing before I get into my um, my week. With the Ilha dress, somebody was asking me about it. Um, sometimes I forget when I finish something, I don't put all of the details. So I just wanted to mention with that dress, it ended up being, because I didn't mention the measurements, it ended up being 30 inches, so it was two inches of negative ease. And on the bottom, it's, such a, it's actually really pretty. Um, it's like a two row offset twisted rib. So you do knit one through the back loop, purl one, and you do that for two rows, and then you offset it. So you then do two rib, two purls on top of the, um, on top of the twisted knits and vice versa and then you offset it again and I did 12 rows so that was the bottom band it doesn't roll it's nice and flat it also doesn't I didn't want anything to pull it in like at the at the dress is a line so I don't want the ribbing to suck it in so that one actually that stitch didn't suck it in but it didn't flare either so oh, suddenly got a bit brightness from the light it's, it's getting very dark here now um, yes, so that's the Ilha dress that I just forgot. Somebody asked me about it and I thought I'd just mention, um, mention that. Right, the other thing, oh yeah, so I think that's probably it for um, all of the knitting stuff. So um, if you've enjoyed the podcast, if you, if you haven't subscribed already, if you could subscribe, then you'll see when I do a new one. I do usually do a new, this kind of podcast every week. And then I try in the like halfway through the week to put up a tutorial. So, and there's usually something that I've either recorded or, um, you know, have to show of something that I've made that I'm, I thought, oh, people would like to see this. So yeah, so if you subscribe, then you'll see when I post something new and if you could like it, that's always nice too. Makes me happy. Right, so personal stuff. Um, last week, um, I went on a 
walk with my friend Amy down. Um, she was, she's had like COVID again, but she's feeling better. We went for a really lovely walk down on the Warrenora River and I forgot to take video, uh, photos again. I'm so slack. So Amy and I went to, um, how we became friends. We went to Vietnam and what well, we both taught at the same school. She's a physics teacher and we, um, we're in like the same home group. So, you know, when you have like kids that you look after like pastoral care and we were in the same team and so our team back before COVID went to Vietnam and Cambodia with some of the kids so Amy and I went together and we shared a room and got to know each other really well and you know it's pretty full-on it's long days looking after the kids like it's an amazing trip but it was you know you're tired you miss your kids and family and everything so we we're just, you know, there and supportive of each other and it does bring you quite close. But she's now teaching at another school and what I find sometimes is when you, when that happens, when you have a friend at work, you don't often catch up that much outside of work, but then when they leave work, you have to be much more intentional about catching up. So I think we, I have a few friends where I've just become closer to them after we've stopped working together and we actually have to book in time together. So yeah, that was really lovely. Um, let me see, Sunday I just went to church with my mum and, and caught up on all my marking that I hadn't done. And then, so today's Thursday, yesterday my husband left for the US. So he's already there, he's in, um, I think he's already been to a brewery on his first day um, with his dad. And they flew, he flew into San Francisco and they went up somewhere to Russian River Brewing Company, something like that. And then he's going to spend a few days in San Jose um, with his dad and his um, stepmom. And then he's going down to San Diego to watch some baseball and his mum and, and stepdad are going to come out. So that'll be really nice for him. I think after losing my dad, um, you know, we're both really conscious of wanting to spend time with our parents and, um, and for him being so far away from his, just making sure that he, you know, makes the intended time to go and visit them. And I think, and one set are coming out in September. His dad and his stepmom uh, are coming in September. So that'll be really lovely. So that was last week. Um, coming up this week, um, I've got brunch. So I've, obviously with my husband not here, I've got like quite a few things that I'm sort of like, I wanna go through my wardrobe because the you know, I can actually just chuck stuff all over the place and clear out things that, you know, and really look at things, am I wearing them and making decisions about stuff. So yes, yeah, so I think I'll do that. Um, and I also want to, you know, clean out the fridge and the you know, boring stuff, clean out the fridge and freezer and just jobs. Um, but other than that, so I've got a pretty quiet week planned. I do, I'm meeting my friend Gloria for brunch on Saturday and, um, and it's a long weekend here. It's the King's birthday. This is the first one where we haven't had a Queen's birthday. It's the King's birthday now. So we do get a day off for that. It's not actually his birthday, nor was it his mum's birthday, but it's like the scheduled day in the middle of the year and um, I won't knock it. So that will be nice to have um, Monday off and Monday's my really busy day. So it's kind of nice to get that one off. Uh, yeah, so that's, um, I think that's my week coming up. There was actually another segment that I was going to, um, I was going to include, but maybe I'll do it next week. Oh, is there anything else I was gonna mention? Somebody asked me how I learned to knit. Same thing, I'll, I'll put that in, because that's sort of knitting stuff rather than my personal stuff and people might've already tuned off. I'll do that next week, how I learned to knit. Um, and the other thing, which I will, um, oh, I have to make sure I do it next week. This one's getting pretty long. But this is like a basket from the cupboard of um, whips and um, things that need mending and a whole bunch of embarrassing stuff. So um, I thought I might, for my own benefit, and maybe yours, maybe you have a basket like this, um, go through it and pull something out each week and take a look at it and decide what am I gonna do with it, am I going to? So I can't tackle the whole basket, that's just ridiculous and I'll just overwhelm myself and make myself sad, which why would you do that? But maybe one thing, it will make me happy if I get through this whole basket, but if I do one thing at a time, then I can sort of show it to you. You can tell me what you think. Um, no, I ripped that out, or maybe maybe that's looking all right. Maybe give it a go, or even um, a solution, you know, like I was knitting something and I, I didn't um, alternate skeins and I've got this big dial-up shift and what I should do, you know, some suggestions. So I will do that. I'll show that next week. All right, anyway, I think that's enough. It will take me a while to edit this. Um, sorry, it's gotten so dark. What time is it? 10 past five here so yeah it's getting dark really late already so I think that's um, I think that's it I'll um, see you next week thanks bye